Hello everyone, my name is Emmanuel, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a website step by step. I'm a web designer. My company is iCreateYourSite.com, and we create over 300 websites per year. But I actually started making websites by watching YouTube videos just like this one. And I want to pay it forward by creating a new YouTube video for you guys to be able to make your own websites. Also, I know this video might look like it's kind of long, but your website will be ready in the first 15 minutes. And in the rest of the video, I'm just going to show you how to customize it and really make it your own. Also, you won't need any kind of special software or program. You won't need to know how to code. All you have to do is follow along the steps with any kind of computer. It can be a Mac or a PC. As long as you have your internet browser and follow along, you can have your own custom website at the end of the video. Also, if you get stuck, you can reach me at icreateyoursite.com slash contact or in the comments below, and I'll be right there to help you with any question you have. All right then, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna go to WP Jelly dot com just like that and this website is really great because normally what you would have to do in the past is you would have to buy a domain which is the name of your website like google.com youtube.com those are domains and you would have to buy hosting which is like the storage of your website hosting is basically like a computer that's always on and shows your website to anybody in the world when they look it up um, but the great thing about WP Jelly is that it actually lets you create your website first and then once you've made your website, then you can get uh, buy your domain and your hosting. You don't have to buy it first. So it lets you make your website for free and then you can get your domain and hosting, which is going to cost about $10 when we get to that part. So here in WP Jelly, we can see they have a lot of uh, templates to help you get started. And if you want to preview any of these, you can just hover over them and you will see a little preview button. So we can click right here, for example, and it's going to show us a preview of what this website uh, would look like if we use it. And we'll be able to change everything on this website. So we can change the layout, we can change the pictures, we can change the logo and the information, the colors, absolutely everything. Um, so if when you look through these templates, you don't find one that matches exactly what you're doing, it's okay. You can change everything about it to make it fit your style. For example, even though this template is uh, about a restaurant, you could change it to make it about plumbing or a carpentry or a mechanic shop, whatever you want. So that's not really a big problem. These layouts are just kind of to help you get started. And if we click load more, we can see that there's a bunch of different ones and if you do happen to find one that fits you uh, more exactly that's great because it kind of helps you get started on some of the stuff so the one that we're going to use is this one right here which we can preview and you'll see that this one is about juice and organic products but that doesn't matter even though our website is not going to be about that um, I'm going to show you how to customize it and make it about whatever you want to make it about so Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to close out of here and we're going to click select this theme. Next, you're going to plug in your name and your email. So I'm going to do that for mine. And we're going to click sign up and create your website. Now we're going to give it a couple of seconds for it to load. OK, so this is the back end of our website. Um, this is called the WordPress dashboard. Right here, the first thing you'll notice is that it says uh, 13 more days left. So WP Jelly lets you um, work on your website for a certain number of days, and then uh, you have to finish it within those number of days to export it. You can't keep it for free forever, but that is more than enough time for you to have a really great website. And even after you export it to your hosting, you can still keep working on it after that, so it's no big deal. So we can go ahead and close out of here. And let's actually see what our website looks like to people when they see it. So to do that, we're going to go over here to where it says my site on the top left. And we're going to click on visit site. OK, so this is how the website looks to anybody who comes to it. Uh, we can see there's some products on here and some images, some text, some reviews. But we're going to go ahead and change all of this because it doesn't really apply uh, to what I want the website to be about. So I live here in sunny South Florida and I really enjoy going to the beach. So that's what I want my website to be about, which has nothing to do with organic uh, foods. Uh, but that's OK because we can customize all of this. And I'm going to show you exactly how easy it is to do that. 
Um, also, this uh, particular theme that I chose has a shop. So if you don't need a shop, I'm going to show you how to remove it. And if you do want a shop, I'm going to have a separate video that's going to show you how to set this part up. All right, so the website also has an about page and we can see how it looks. We're going to be able to edit and customize all of this as well. And there's also a contact page with a contact form that we're going to set up so that people can uh, send you a message if they want to contact you. There's also an account page for the shop, which we're going to remove and replace with an image gallery so that you can share pictures that you might want to share for your product or service or whatever your website's going to be about. So how exactly do we start changing this website? Well, it's super simple. Uh, let's start by making changes to the home page. We can click on home and then we're going to see up here this toolbar. Now this toolbar here, only we see it when people come to our website, they're not going to see this. Only we see this because we're logged in and uh, this has different tools that we can use to edit the website. Now to edit how it looks, what we're going to use is Elementor, which is right up here. So we're going to click edit with Elementor. Okay. So we're going to see the website load up just like this. And here on the left hand side, this is the Elementor toolbox. Um, this is all the stuff that we can add and change on our website. And it's actually really simple to do. Pretty much anything that you can click on, you can change. So for example, if I wanted to change this text right here, I can click this little pencil and we can see the text shows up over here and we can change whatever this says. So I can write, for example, welcome to the beach, just like that. Um, we can also replace an image. So if I click on this little pencil right here, we can see that the image shows up here and we can click on the image to upload an image from our computer but we don't have any images yet i'm going to show you where you can get a bunch of really awesome images so we can go ahead and close out of here if we keep scrolling down we can see that there's a button that we can also edit so we can change what the button says to maybe since it's not going to be a shop we can change it to about us and then uh, we, we might want this button to link to our about page. So here we can see where it says link and we can write about and that's going to give us the option to add the about page. And maybe we want to change the icon uh, for this button, which is right here. And there's a bunch of different kinds of icons that we can use. Um, I really like using just a little arrow. I think it's very clean and very modern. So you can write uh, right and that will give you the option for a right angle arrow. So you can click right there and click insert and you'll see that that icon changed. So everything on this website can be changed. Um, you can also change the colors. For example, if I go to style, you can pick the background color right here of the button. You can change the shape of the button if you want to make it square. There's a million things that you can do and we're going to get into it one by one. Uh, so that you can see all the different possibilities. Um, so there's also a really great undo button right here under history. So if you make any mistake, you can go back as many steps as you need to get it to where you need to be. Once you're done making changes, you can click update and that will save the changes that you've made. To see your changes, you can just click on this little eyeball right here to preview. And we can see that now uh, on the preview, we have the updated about us text with the arrow. And if we click it, it will link to the about us page. So how do we start making a website that's truly for you and just about you? So what you want to do is pick the colors that you want to use, pick the images that you want to use and pick the different kinds of icons that you want to use. You might also want to take some notes and figure out what kind of things you want to write and say about your business or your idea. Now, before we start doing that, I do want to show you a little bit more of the kinds of changes you can make with Elementor. So let's go back to the Elementor editor. And uh, I want to start with this text up here. So every element, um, every part of the website will have three options. It's going to have a content option, a style option, and an advanced option. The content option will show you what is actually the content, whether it's 
an icon or text in this case or an image. Um, and you see that here you get a lot of different options under the content. We have the actual content itself. If you want to link it to something, you can actually add a link right here. And there's some size, this HTML tag, which you don't really have to worry about, and the alignment if you want to center it or put it to the right or left. Um, so those are the options for this particular uh, element. If we go to style, we can actually change a little bit more about how it looks. We see that we have text color right here. So we can change what color we want it to be. Um, let's say we want it to be red, for example, although that's probably not the best color to use. But just as an example, let's say we want it to be red. Next, you have typography, which is the typeface that you want to use. And if we click edit on there, we can see the font family. And if we click here, there's a ton of different fonts that we can use. Um, so for example, if we pick a different font, we can see how it changes like that. So you can figure out what font you want to use. Um, you can also figure out what size you want to use like this with the size slider. The weight is how thick you want the font to be. So for example, maybe you want it to be very thin at 100, or maybe you want it to be very thick at 900. Um, some fonts show it better than others. For example, this is a font that I like. And here you can see that the thin one is really thin and the thick one is really thick. You can also make all the letters be uppercase or make them all lowercase or make them capitalized or leave it as default. Whatever you want here under transform. We're going to leave it all uppercase for now because that looks kind of nice. You also have some decorations if you want to underline the text or even put a line over it or through it. Uh, I don't really use these th that much, so I'm going to leave it as default. The line height uh, is if you want to choose how much space you want between the lines. Because there's only one sentence, you really can't tell that much. But you can see that it adds more or less spacing between different lines. And then the letter spacing controls how far apart the letters are. So that's an example for all the options that you get under text. Um, if you go to... You can also add a shadow to your text, but that's usually not a good idea and it looks kind of ugly and makes it hard to read. So I like to leave the shadows alone. Under advanced, there's some more options. Margin is how much space you want there to be around this uh, particular little box that you see here. So for example, if I write 100, we see that it makes a really big gap. Um, and you see that whenever I change one of these, they all change. We can actually click this little uh, link together values thing if you want to make them all different. And this is really good if you want to space things out like that. Um, but for now, let's leave these all back to where they were. Just like that. Um, under advanced, you can also change the padding, which is a different way to add spacing. This spacing is on the inside. And you can also change that spacing. You can add motion effects if you want things to have an animation, like fading in, like that. Or maybe you want it to zoom in, like that. Uh, normally, you don't want to add too many effects because it kind of end uh, ends up looking a little bit unprofessional. So I'm going to leave that at none for now. And you can add a background. Uh, in this case, we would be adding a background just to this text, not to the whole uh, thing. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of different options and you can look through them and mess with them and see what looks best for your website. Uh, I want to change the text color back to what it was before. I think it was like black. There you go. Um, okay, so let's start customizing this website. Uh, I'm going to make it about the beach. Uh, you can follow along and make it about whatever you want. So let's go ahead and hit update right here to save our changes. So if you want to find images for your website, you want to make sure that the images are free and you have the right to use them. You don't want to steal images from uh, people without permission. Uh, I'm going to show you a really great website to get pictures from. And we can just replace this tab right here. Pixabay.com is a really great website to find free images. Um, they have all kinds of images. So uh, my website is going to be about the beach. So I can write beach. 
and I'm going to get a ton of images related to the beach. But if your website, for example, is going to be about flowers, you can write a flower. If you're a car mechanic and you want pictures of cars, you can write car. If, you know, you are a doctor, you can write a doctor and you can get pictures of, that are medically uh, related. So whatever service or product uh, or whatever your website is going to be about, you can find free images on here. Uh, mine is going to be about the beach, so I'm going to search for pictures uh, of the beach. And for example, this one is a really nice picture. And you can see here that we have an option for a free download that we can click to save the picture. And we get a couple of different options. Um, we want to make sure that the pictures we choose are under one megabyte so that the website doesn't load slowly. Uh, so we're going to choose right here. This is 556 KB and we can click download to save that picture. Check I'm not a robot and click download again. And that's going to save the picture. So we can come back here and we probably want to go ahead and save a couple of pictures that we like uh, so that we can use them on our website. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a couple of my favorites now. All right, so I got a couple of really good images. So now I can go ahead and close out of here and go back to the website. So we already have some of the images that we want to use uh, to replace some of the ones that come with the website. Uh, we also probably want to replace these icons. So I'm going to show you how to get uh, your own icons completely for free as well. So we're going to come back here and this time we're going to go to logomaker.com spelled like this. That's logo maker without the E. And on this website, you can actually uh, get a bunch of free icons. So we can search right here for beach. Uh, and the same thing goes if you're a florist, you can search for flowers and you'll get flower icons. If you are a race car driver, you can write car and you get a lot of different car icons. So just search for whatever type of icons you think would look good on your website and you can pick the ones that you like best. So I'm going to get a couple um, that might be related to the beach. So I really like this one. And we can also change the color uh, that we want it to be. So I think uh, for the beach, I kind of want an orangey color. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a nice light yellow orange color like this. And I can actually see the color code right here on the right hand side. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that and save it so that all my icons are the same color. So once I have the icon and I highlighted it and chose the color, you can click up here on the top right to save that icon. And you can click here, no thanks, and save the low resolution file. And there you go, it's saved. So I'm going to keep looking and I'm going to find a couple of more icons that might be nice. This one with the surfboard is kind of nice as well. So we can actually move this to the side and delete this one so they don't overlap. And we can bring this back, highlight it, and then paste in here the color we want it to be, just like that and we can save it and click download right here. So you can go ahead and do that and just download a couple of nice icons to use on your website. And that's exactly what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I've got a couple of nice icons to use on my website so I can close out of here. Also, if you don't have a logo, you can actually make a logo using a logo maker. So for example, I could actually search for the beach and uh, let's say I had some kind of company or business related to the beach. I might want to find a really nice picture of the sun. So I might write sun instead since the beach is pretty sunny. Let's see. This one's really nice. And you can actually make a logo uh, using Logo Maker. So I'll show you how to do that. You can get your icon. And then you can get text and you can type in here the name of your company. So for example, let's just call this the Sun Company. Like that. I'm going to make it two lines. That looks pretty nice. Let's shrink it right here. Let's move it here next. 
and let's make it a little bit bigger you can stretch it out perfect and we can maybe make a choose a font that's a little bit thicker let's see here this one looks nice oh i think it's a little too thick let's see this one looks nice that looks fun i like that one a lot and we're gonna make this the same color like that all right so this can be our little logo for the website um actually let me move this a little bit to the side over here yeah let's align it to the left there you go and give it a little bit of space perfect so i'm going to save this this is going to be my logo uh, you can use your own logo or you can use logo maker to create a logo so i'm going to go ahead and go ahead and click save here and save that as my logo there you go so now we can close out of here and we're back here on our website so let's go ahead and upload the media to our website and i'll show you how to do that uh, we're going to click preview here to get another tab with our uh, toolbar up here and we're going to go to my website up here and we're going to go to media so we're going to click on media and we're going to click add new media so here there's already some media uh, from the template that we used and we're going to replace that with our own media so we're going to click add new media and we're going to click select files and we're going to choose our download folder or whatever folder uh, you have your media in so here we have the images that I downloaded and the icons so we're going to select all of them and save them to our website and now we can see that here all our images are now in our media folder so we can start uh, using them on our website so we can go ahead and close out of here and we can get started customizing our website so the first thing we're going to do is delete uh, this picture over here we can do that by right clicking and then we're going to click delete to get rid of that and also you'll see that uh, this part of the website here is divided into two columns these little gray things are columns um, I kind of want it to be full width and go all the way across so I can actually right click on this column and delete it and now it goes all the way across which looks much nicer I also want to go ahead and add a background so I'm going to show you how to add a background uh, to add a background to a section all you have to do is click right here in the center and then you see some options here for the layout which we're going to leave alone and under style we have the background type right now it says that there's a gradient uh, from a white to like a light yellow which is barely visible here um, but we're going to change it to a picture background so we're going to choose classic and then we're going to choose an image so here it lets us select files again but we actually just uploaded them so we can go to the media library and here we have all the pictures that we have uploaded so my favorite one is this one so i want to have this one front and center and i'm going to click insert media so now we see that we have the background here but it looks kind of weird it's like over here in the bottom corner and that's because of these settings right here for the positioning so here where it says size we're going to change it to cover so that it fills up the entire area and here where it says bottom right under position we're going to put that uh, to the center 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 so the image is nice and centered so that looks really nice but as you can see the text is a little bit hard to read so we have to make some changes to the text to do that we're going to click right here on the text and then uh, for the text we're going to go to style and we're going to change the text color to white there you go that's a little bit easier to read and we're going to do the same thing to this text we're going to change it to white and we're going to change this text to white as well under style and change to white there you go um, and we're also going to change what it says so here it says welcome to the beach and instead of organic products we're gonna put here the name of our company the sun company like that and we're going to change the font as well to lato which is a font that i really like you can use whichever font you prefer there you go 
and we're going to make it a little bit bigger so that it stands out more. And here we can either delete this description if we don't want it uh, to be there. Um, but I do want it to be there, so I'm going to write a little description here. Helping you enjoy the sun every day. There you go. That's my little description. And we're going to fix that just like that. Now, uh, I think it'll look nicer if it is centered. So let's do that. We're going to go ahead and center the text under content. We're going to click here to center it. And we're going to do the same to these two titles up here. Same for the text. And the same for this button. We're going to click on the button. And we're going to go to content and center it. Just like that. So this one's a little bit off center. Uh, we can click here and see why that is. Uh, and we, if we go under advanced, we see that there might be some custom positioning right here under positioning where it says custom. We want to put that to default. There you go. Now it's where it's supposed to be. Um, we also probably want to make it a little bit bigger because it is a little hard to see. We can go back to style, back to typography and make it maybe 25. I think is nice. There you go. The next thing we want to do is probably this button. We want to make it yellow so that it matches the colors we're going to be using on our website. So we're going to go to style and then go to background color for the button. And we're going to choose a yellow. Let's see. Maybe not too bright. Just like that. And the text color, maybe we should make it black so that it's easier to read. There you go. There's the About Us button. Um, now we also have this little leaf up here, which we want to change and replace. We can click on that. And we can see this is a little leaf icon, which we can replace with one of, one of our own icons. Uh, we can probably use this little beach chair. It's kind of big, so we need to center it and make it a little bit smaller under style image width we can shrink it and just like that looks really good but you can see that it's still a little bit hard to read the text so we can actually go ahead and darken the background a little bit to make it uh, easier to read so we can go back here to the background and then if we scroll down under background overlay uh, we can see that this picture is still here from the other website uh, you can kind of see it here a little bit we can go ahead and delete this and we can add a color overlay. We can choose black. And here we can choose how the opacity of it. We can make it 100% to make it completely black or zero to not use it at all. Um, so we can leave it a little bit in the middle, maybe 20, just to make the white text a little bit easier to read. So now you can see that uh, the page that used to be about organic uh, juice has nothing to do with organic juice anymore. Uh, I can go ahead and, and click update now to save those changes and we can preview to see what it's going to look like. And here is the new section. Looks really nice and it looks completely different from what was there before. So that's what I mean when I say that you can make the website look however you want and that these layouts are just kind of to get you started but you can completely change them. So let's go back and make a couple of more changes uh, to this layout. So we're going to go back here and we can close out of here. So these things here also don't really apply to me. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of them to delete them like this. Uh, this section I'm going to keep because I like how it looks. And uh, this section I'm going to close and this one as well and this one as well. All right. So I want to add now a new section. And to do that, you're going to see that there's a little plus symbol up here. They all have them. So this lets you add a section uh, to the top. You can also scroll down here and click this plus over here. So when you click that, it's going to ask you um, how you would like it to look, how many columns you would like it to have. And I'm going to choose one that has three columns. And here I have a section now that has three columns. And I want it to go in between these two so I can actually just click here in the middle and drag it right in between both of them like this. 
And in this section, what I want to do is maybe lay out my top three services. So I'll show you how you can do that. So you can go up here to the top left hand corner and click on this little square icon up here. And here you will see there's a bunch of different uh, elements that you can use. And all of these can be added to your website. So for example, I might want to have an image. And then I might also want to have under that image some text like a heading for the service. And then I might want to have a button that takes them to a page where I talk about that service uh, like that. So here it looks kind of funky, but we're going to edit it and make it look nice. So the first thing we're going to do is insert a picture here. So we're going to click on this little pencil and click on the left side to choose an image. So I'll pick one of my icons to represent the service and click insert media like that. Um, now it looks a little too big, so I want to go ahead and center it. And then I want to go to style and make it a little bit smaller. So I can size it and that looks about right. Next, I want to go here to the text and I want to name the service. So I can put maybe Sandcastle Building like that and I'll go ahead and center it. And then I will go to this button right here to edit it. And let's right here learn more. Now, I want to link this to my services page, but I don't have any service page yet. So we're going to finish designing this section and then we're going to create a page for the services. So let's go ahead and center the button. And we can go to style and we want to make sure that uh, we style this button the exact same way as the other button so that it matches. And we can do that by going to style and going to the font and the background color, but there's actually a much easier way to do it, which is once you've styled one button the way that you like it, you can right click on it. You can click copy and then you can click, you can right click and paste style and that will copy the styling uh, of that button to the new button. That way you don't have to change the settings every time. And you can do the same thing for the other buttons on the website as well, like this, so that the style matches every time. Now, we want to have a page that uh, links to these services. So let's add a second and third service. And we can actually use that same copy and paste feature so that we don't have to redo um, all these steps again. So I can actually right click on this column to uh, copy and paste this whole column. So if I right click on this column, there's an option that says duplicate. And I can click that to make a copy of it. And then I can click it again to make another copy. Now I have three. And it's tried to uh, space it out evenly. So there's some extra ones here. We can go ahead and delete these extra ones that are blank. Like that. Now all we have to do is replace the image and the text, but all the design part is already done. So we're going to pick a different icon for that service, like this umbrella. And we're going to change the sizing by going to style and making sure the sizes look even like that and then we're gonna change this to another service and next we're gonna do the third service by replacing the icon there as well making sure it's the right size and then uh, naming the service once again just like that. So another thing that you might notice is that there's actually, uh, I feel like this section is kind of too close to this one and this one, it looks kind of cramped. So I want to add some spacing on top and on the bottom of this whole row. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So you're going to click right here in the middle. This little bar up here controls the entire row. So we're going to click right here in the middle. And this time we're going to go to advanced. And now we're going to use that margin option and the padding option that controls the spacing. So we can go to padding. We want to unlock it because we're going to use different amounts. And we want the top part to be 70 pixels away from this section and the bottom part to also be 70 pixels away. That way things are a little bit better spaced out. So we can click update to save that change. And we can click the little eye here to preview to see how it looks. 
So we scroll down and now we see here we have our three services with learn more for each. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a service page that will actually connect to these buttons. So let me show you how to edit, uh, add and remove pages. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove these extra pages and add a service page instead. So to do that, you're going to go to my sites and you're going to click right there. Then you're going to go to pages and we're going to go ahead and delete the shop and the my account page. And we're going to do that by going up here and selecting move to trash. So that will delete those extra pages. Then we're going to click add a new page and we're going to close out of here and we're going to add a title for this page and we are going to title it services and we're going to click publish. So we've created the page, but it's actually not in our website's menu yet. We have to add it to the menu. To do that, we're going to go to appearances down here on the bottom left and we're going to go to menus. All right, so these two come out in red because we deleted them. So we can click right here on this arrow and click remove from the menu since they're not going to be there anymore. And click remove here as well. Then we have a services page here, which we're going to add to the menu. And we can actually rearrange where we want it to show up in the menu so we can drag. And let's put it right between the about and the contact page. And we're going to hit save menu. Now we can go back to my sites and visit to view our website again. And now we see that we have the about page and the services page. And these pages we're going to edit the same way that we're editing uh, these. So if I go to the about page, you'll be able to click edit with Elementor on this page right here. And you'll be able to make the changes uh, the same way that uh, I showed in the home page. So you'll be able to edit this that exact same way. So let's go back right now and let's click leave. And let's go to the service page that we just added. We see that this one here is blank. So we need to go ahead and add that in there. And to do that, we're going to click edit page up here. And we're going to click edit with Elementor up here. So now we want to create a page uh, for our services that we can link to from the home page. And it's kind of hard to start from a blank space. So what I like to do is recycle the work that I've already done. And Elementor gives you a really easy way to reuse things that you've already made uh, the same way you can copy and paste and the same way that you can duplicate. Uh, you can actually do that between different pages. So if I come back here to the home page and I want to have another nice title section like this, uh, I can actually right click on here, click copy, then go back to the services page and click paste. And I have that entire section there again. But I don't want to have an exact copy. I just want to have uh, a nice title that says services. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all these extra things and just leave the title area. And then here I want to go ahead and write services. And I want to make this section a little bit smaller so it doesn't take up that much space. So to edit the spacing, you're going to go to this section up here and you're going to go to advanced and then you see here that padding which is the spacing uh, tells us 120 pixels on the top and 120 in the bottom well we can do half let's do 60 and 60. I also want to use a different background image so that I don't keep reusing the same picture uh, to change the background picture we're going to keep it here in the uh, section settings and we're going to go to style and here we have that image. Now all the image settings are the same, so we don't have to worry about changing those again. We can click here where it says choose image and pick a new image. Let's pick this one here with the sunglasses and click insert. And now that I just added that, I did notice that it does look like it's a little bit to the right and it looks like there's some extra spacing right here. Uh, so let's try to fix that. We can go here to the column options. It looks like there might be some spacing over here we can go to advanced and yes we can see that there's an extra 100 pixels of spacing here and we can remove that there you go now it's perfectly centered so we can click update and let's go ahead and fix that in the home page as well we can see that here we have that spacing it doesn't go all the way to the edge of the box 
uh, and it does look like everything is a little bit to the right. So we can click right here on this column and go to advanced and there's that extra padding and we can remove it. Perfect, now it looks centered. Let's update that as well. So it's okay to make mistakes, guys. Um, you can uh, play with it and change the settings and try new things. Uh, remember, you do have that undo button in case you make a mistake, but uh, it's really fun to explore the different settings and really try to make your website unique. All right, so here in the services page, we go back here to services, and let's uh, click edit with Elementor again to open that up. Uh, now I want to add a little bit more information for each section. So my idea is to have an image and then some information and then an image and then some information. So I'm going to add a new section and I want it to have two sides like this. And I want to have a picture on one side and information on the other side. So we can actually add an image by dragging and drop it in, in here. And then here I want to have a title and some information. So we're going to go back here to the square to show all the elements. We're going to add in a heading and we're going to go back and we're going to add here some text from the text editor. Right like that. Now, an issue that we might have is if our pictures are different sizes, uh, it might not look very even. So let's see how that works. Let's uh, add an image here. Uh, let's pick this one here. Okay, great. Now I want to recycle this section again so that I don't have to redesign it. Uh, before I do that, I would like this text to be here in the middle. So to do that, you can actually go here to the column options. And here where you see vertical alignment, instead of default, you can put middle. And that will align everything here in the middle. And let's uh, go back to this section and duplicate it. And let's duplicate it one more time since we have three services and I want to have three sections. And let's change the image here. Let's see how it looks. The image might be a different size. And let's insert it. And we can see that the issue we're facing here is that these two images are different sizes, so it doesn't really look very even. Uh, but I'll show you how to fix that. Let's go ahead and delete the image and delete it from here too. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a spacer that makes this uh, row a specific size. And then we're going to add an image as the background instead of just adding an image directly. So here we're going to see an option called spacer and we're going to add it in right here. And here uh, it's going to ask us how much space you want it to take up. And you can scroll for it to take up a lot of space or a little bit of space. And I think 350 will be a good amount like that. Then we're going to go here to the column and we're going to add a background to this column. So we're going to go to style and background type classic. And we're going to add our image again. So here we can see that it looks all blue. And the reason is because our image is really large and it's actually not compressing the image into this section. So to do that, we have to go here to the image settings and change the size to cover so that it fills up the space and the position we're going to put it uh, center, center. There you go. So we're going to delete these that we added here. And we're going to use this one that has the correct settings. I also want to add a little bit of space between each section so it's not touching. So we're going to go here to the row. Going to go to advanced. And uh, let's add, uh, I think 10 is a good amount. Whoops, too much. 10 on the top and 10 on the bottom. Perfect. Now we can duplicate this and duplicate this again. All right, there you go. So now we can replace the image here by going again to column and going to style and changing the background image. There you are. Now they actually take up the same amount of space. And we're going to change this image as well. There you go. Now, another thing that I want to add is I want to add the icon for each one of these services 
to the service section so that when people look at it, they can know which service goes with what text. So to do that, I can go back to here to show all the elements and I can go back to images and we're gonna add it right here on the top of the text. And we're going to find the sandcastle and insert it. We're gonna align it to the left and we're gonna pick the right size. 25 looks really good. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other icons. Let's see, this one looks, maybe 35 will be better for this one. There you go, perfect. And finally, we'll add the last one. And align it to the left, go to style, and size it up so that it matches, perfect. Next, we can copy and paste the titles from one section to the other. There you go. And then under here, uh, you can replace this text with whatever description of your services that you want, uh, however you want to describe them. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save right here. And we can click the little eyeball to preview it. And now you can see that we have a services page that has uh, all our services and the information for each service. Now, I don't like that these things look like they're kind of too close together. So let's go ahead and add some spacing between them. We can go back to the editor here. And we can click right here at the column. And we want, some, we want to add some spacing here on the left-hand side. So we'll click on the column. We'll click on advanced. And we can scroll down a little bit here. Uh, and let's add some padding on the left hand side so we can unlink these and here where it says left let's add 20 uh, maybe we should do a little more how about 40 that looks a little bit better so let's do the same thing for this one we're going to go to advanced unlink them and add 40 on the left go to column go to advanced unlink them and add 40 on the left. And we're going to click update. And we can see how that looks by refreshing the page. All right, that looks a little bit better. Um, I also don't like that this picture goes all the way across and then this one stops right here. So I want to make this go all the way across as well. So let's go back to Elementor. And to do that, we have to change the width of the row. So we can click here on the options for the row. And here under layout, you'll see that the content is boxed. We're going to change that to full width. We're going to scroll down and change it for the other section as well. Full width. And full width. And we're going to click update. And we can preview the changes here. All right, there you go. Now we have here the services and the information and the text. All right, so that looks much better. Um, now I like that the images go all the way over here, but not the text. The text looks a little crazy going all the way over here. So I wanna add some space on the right hand side of the text. So we'll go back to services. And here under this column, we had 40 on the left. Let's add 40 on the right as well. That way everything is nice and even. We'll add 40 there. And we'll add 40 here as well. And let's click update. And refresh. Perfect, much better. So here we can add a picture, an icon, the title of our service, and more information about that service. Now, that is the service page. We can close out of here and close out of here. And here is the home page. Now let's go ahead and looks like we have to update here to save our changes. Let's go ahead and refresh here. That way uh, it can pick up on the fact that we added a page. Now we scroll down to the button again and we can type services in here. 
and it will detect that there's a page called services and we can choose it and we'll do the same for the other buttons as well and the last one as well all right so we have our header section we have our services and the last thing we want to do is a call to action so that people can contact us so let's replace this text and let's write contact us today instead there you go and we're going to replace this button with one that says contact us as well um now that seems a little repetitive so actually let's write something different here there you go and now this button we're going to remove the little shopping cart icon and maybe you can put a little uh, email icon instead since they can fill out a form to contact us like this one right here and click insert now this looks like it's a little bit unaligned so let's go here to this column and make sure that the alignment is in the middle there you go now it looks like it is aligned all right so now when they click here we want to make sure that the button is linked to the contact page so we're going to edit the link and put contact and we're going to click update and let's preview the page all right perfect so you can see the web page is looking a lot different than what it was before so now we can click contact us and that's going to go to the contact page so now we can go ahead and close out of here and I'm going to show you guys one last thing, which is how to add a video background uh, to kind of call more attention to a specific section. We're going to add a video background right here. So to do that, we're going to click right here on the options and we're going to go to style. And instead of uh, classic, we're going to choose video. So you can actually add a link from a YouTube video or you can uh, download and save a video. I have a video that I'm going to use, which is this one. So all I have to do is copy this link and paste it right here and uh, pick a start time and end time. So we can do maybe uh, we're going to start 45 seconds in or 40 seconds in and then end the video at 75 seconds. And that way they don't have to play the entire video on the website. Uh, so we'll paste the link right here. And now you see that we have that really nice video background. And we can also add an overlay if the text is a little bit hard to read. We can add a uh, color overlay. In this case, let's do black. And let's do about 20%. There you go. So the text is easy to read. And we can click update. And preview. We can close out of here. And now you can see that we have our header our services and our call to action right here that looks really nice and really cool so the next thing that we're going to change is the header which is this top part of the website and the footer which is this bottom part of the website we're going to go ahead and change both of those things next so we can start with the top header to change that we're actually going to go to customize and uh, we can also close out of here already and we're going to go to site identity and the first part of the header we're going to change is actually what comes up here in the tab. So here you're going to put your site title and your tagline. So the site title could be the name of your company, for example. And the tagline can be uh, whatever your slogan or any other thing you want to say about your company there. The site icon is a little icon that shows up in the uh, top left corner of the tab. So we can click on site icon. And we can use one of the icons that we made, for example, this one. Click select. And it's going to crop it out because it has to be a perfect square. So we can choose what part we want to show and click crop image. And now that will actually be our website's icon. So we can now click the back button here. And we're going to click publish to save those changes. Then we're going to go to header and then we're going to go to logo. And we're going to click change logo. And we're going to choose uh, the logo we made, or you can upload your own logo as well and click select. 
and click skip cropping. This time we're not going to crop it. And we can see that it replaced the logo here, but it's a little too big. So we can actually adjust this to the size with this slider here. And I think it looks good here at 200. Perfect. Next, since we don't have a shop anymore, we can get rid of this little bag icon. So we're going to click publish right here. And we're going to remove that from the menu. So we're going to click back here. And we're going to click back one more time. And we're going to go to WooCommerce. Then we're going to go to menu cart. And for visibility, we're going to choose disable on all devices since we're not using it. And that will remove uh, the cart there. Also, you might notice that the menu highlights in green. So you might want to change that color as well. So we're going to do that next. We're going to click publish to save those changes that we've made so far. And we're going to go back one more time and click back again. And we're going to scroll down to header. And we're going to click on menu. And we can scroll down here to where it says link color on hover. We can choose what color we want it to be. And I want it to be a shade of yellow similar to the one that I have like this. And let's see how that looks. Perfect. That looks good. And we're going to click publish. And now we can finally close out of here. Great. Now that we have our header set up, we can work on our footer next. So we can click edit with Elementor, but this time we're going to click here where it says footer. So we're going to go ahead and replace this image with our logo. The Sun Company and click insert. Next, uh, we see here that we have some contact info. We can replace these with our own. So I don't have a fax. So I'm going to delete that. And I only have one email, so I'm going to delete that as well. And we can plug in our own email here and plug in here our own phone number as well. Here we have the link to our pages. We can see that it is green when we hover it. We probably want to change that to yellow. So we're going to click edit and we're going to change the style and we're going to change the text. And here we see hover color is green. We want to make that yellow. So we're going to scroll this over here to yellow and move it over here to the corner. And there you go, works perfect. Here we can replace this text with some information about our company. And under that we have some social media links. And we can edit these and replace the link with the link to our own social media. All you have to do is copy and paste it right there. And I do wanna change the color, which is also green. We're gonna make that yellow again. So we're gonna scroll down here to icon hover and change it from green to yellow. There you go. And we're going to click update. Perfect. So we can hit preview. And that shows us a preview of the footer. And let's go back to the home page. So here we go. We have our top section, our middle services, our call to action, and our footer. The next part would be to edit the about page. And there's two ways to do this. You can edit the information that is already here, or you can delete it and make your own. That part is up to you however you want to do it. We also have our contact page, which we probably want to replace the contact information for, and the form. Now, this form is automatically connected to the email that you set up your WP Jelly account with, but it's not going to work until you move it over to uh, your own hosting. So let's get into doing that. Let's move this website over to our own hosting now that it's almost ready. And you can actually finish it uh, on your own hosting if you run out of time here on WP Jelly. And moving it over is actually really easy. Let me go ahead and show you how to do that next. We're going to go back to the dashboard. And before we export the website, we're going to set up a username and password. So we're going to go down here to users. Now, in your email, to the email that you set up, you will have gotten your username and password, but we're going to change it and have our own. So we're going to go here to our username and click edit. And we're going to scroll down to where it says new password, and we're going to click generate password. And you can use this password or you can erase it. 
and type in your own password like that. So now you've made your own password and you can click show to preview your password and make sure you type that out correctly. And we're going to go ahead and scroll all the way down and click update profile. Perfect. So now you have your username and your password set up. Uh, you are going to want to save both of those so you don't forget them. The next step is to actually uh, get ready to export your website. To do that, you're going to click right here where it says WP Jelly. And you're going to click right here where it says export full website. All right. So here we have a couple of steps. We have to download a plugin, upload it to our uh, new hosting and then use this key to transfer our website. So the first thing we're going to do is download the plugin by clicking here. And the next step is going to be to get our own domain and hosting, which is actually going to be really simple to do as well. So we're going to go ahead and X out of here. And we're going to open a new tab and we're going to go to HostGator.com. From HostGator.com, you're going to click on Web Hosting. And there's three plans here, the hatching plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. They offer different uh, things and features. Um, we're going to go with the hatchling plan since it's the cheapest, but you can upgrade uh, whenever you want, or you can choose a better plan if you want. So we're going to click buy now. And the first thing we're going to do is pick a domain name. If you already have a domain name that you bought, you can choose I already own this domain name and plug it in there. Uh, but we're going to register a brand new domain name. So the name that I'm going to choose is the Miami Sun Company. And we're going to choose from this list here, .com, since that's the most popular one. You can use .net or .site or .club even if you want, uh, but I like using .com. And we can see that it is available. If this shows a red box and it says that it's not available, you might have to use a different ending or change the domain a little bit uh, to make sure that you can get it. So the domain is available. We can continue on to the next step. Here you can see there's something called domain privacy. Pretty much after you set up a domain, uh, you might get some phone calls of people trying to sell you different services and web design services and things like that. Um, if you pick domain privacy, uh, it's less likely for that to happen. Um, but I don't really mind. Usually if it's an unknown phone number, I probably won't answer. And if it is, I'll just hang up. So I'm not going to pay extra for this, but you can if you want to. Next, we have the different plans. We already picked the hatchling plan. So here it tells us uh, how many cycles you want to buy it for. Um, so the more months you buy, the cheaper it is. So you can buy 36 months for $2.75 each um, or 12 months or six months. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to buy one month for now, which will be $10.95. Uh, but I have a promo code that will make it a little bit cheaper. Next, we're going to set up a username and a security pin. And I'm just going to set up my name. And security pin that's easy for you to remember. Next, we're going to see here that we have our billing information, which you can use your credit card or PayPal. So we're going to go ahead and fill all that in. OK, so I filled out all the billing information and we can scroll down to the next section. Uh, there's some additional services that you can get. Um, we don't really need most of these, so we can uncheck them right here. And we can scroll down and we can see our total is twenty three dollars and ninety cents. And HostGator gave us a little coupon code, but there's actually a better coupon code that I can share with you. And that is save code which is S-A-V-E-C-O-D-E, -E, like this. And we can click Validate. And if we scroll down, we see that it went down to $10.37. And this is the best code that I have been able to find as far as uh, giving you the highest discount. So we have a domain, our hosting, uh, and everything we need to get our website live and on the internet uh, for just $10.37. So we're going to scroll down. Before we check out, we have to check that we agree to the terms of service. And now we can check out. So we're going to wait a few seconds while HostGator sets up our account. 
Okay, so it looks like we're ready to get started and we can close out of here. The host gator has a way to uh, get started on the website, but we're going to do it our own way. So we're going to click not right now. And that's going to take us to our regular uh, host gator dashboard. The next thing we're going to do is click here where it says launch cPanel. And we're going to click here where it says WordPress installer. If it doesn't show up here in the popular links, uh, you can scroll down to find it. Or you can uh, use a little search bar up here to search for it, but you're going to look for WordPress installer and we're going to click on it and it's going to ask you what domain you want to use. And we're going to pick the domain that we set up directory. We can leave blank and normally they can charge you up to $400 to do this. And uh, in this video, you're going to learn how to do that for free. So you just saved uh, potentially up to $400. So we're going to click next. We're going to add here our title. And we're going to click right here and we're going to click install. All right. So it is installing WordPress on our domain and we're going to give it a few seconds for it to finish. Okay. So it finished and it created a username and password for us. Now we don't want to lose this because we're going to need this uh, real quick. So what we're going to do is copy the name right here and open it in a new tab. All right, so this is the coming soon page. Now you can click here to log in, but this coming soon page, sometimes they change how it looks. So the safe way and the way that always works is to just add slash WP dash admin. And that's going to take you to the login page of your website every time. So this is the login page of your WordPress website. And we're going to plug in our username and our password so we can copy this password here and put in our username and paste our password and click login. So this is a separate WordPress installation from the one we were using in WP Jelly. Um, and we're going to pretty much import this one from here to here. So we're going to click uh, this email is correct. It's asking us to verify the email. And now we've logged in and there's a million different things that are pre-installed in here. Uh, so don't worry about all these pop-ups and notifications. We're going to go to plugins right here. And just to make sure something doesn't get stuck, let's actually remove all of these before we move forward. So we can just check here and we're going to click deactivate apply. Sometimes when there's too many of them at the same time, it actually can cause errors. So we're going to also check them again and then click delete and click okay. And with plugins, you can actually add more functionality uh, to your website if you want to add even more stuff like memberships um, and all kinds of things uh, that you can find. So there really is no limit to what you can do with WordPress. So we just downloaded this uh, plugin a few minutes ago. Now we're going to upload it to our new website. So we're going to click uh, here under plugins. We're going to click add new and we're going to click upload plugin. And we're going to click choose file. And now we see that we have the WP Jelly zip right here and we're going to click open and we're going to click install now. So after a few seconds, we're going to click activate plugin. And now we're going to see that on the left hand side, we have the WP Jelly option. So now we're going to click here where it says import full website and we see it's asking us for uh, the website key and we can get that from our website here. This is the key. We're going to select all of it and copy it. And then we're going to come back here and we're going to paste it and we're going to click import website and we're going to click yes. So it's pretty much telling us that if we had made anything else here, it's going to delete it and replace it with what we're importing. But right now our website is blank. So that is okay. We're going to click yes. And now we're going to give it a couple of minutes for it to finish importing. Okay. So the import just finished. So now to see that our website has moved over, we can erase this part here of the URL and then just hit enter to find the website. And that's going to load up our website. And now we see that we have the domain name up here with our uh, website that we transferred over. Now, if you haven't finished your website, that's OK, because, um, for example, if you want to edit a page, you can still go to it 
you can still click edit with Elementor and continue to make changes to the background or the text or the pictures. And uh, you can make changes even after you transfer it. So that's no big deal. So let's go back to the website and I'll show you the final things that you need to do uh, to make sure your website is ready to go. So one of the last things we want to double check is in the contact page, we want to make sure the contact form that is there actually uh, works. So you want to fill it out and send out a test email to yourself. So we're going to go ahead and send an email to ourselves. The website should automatically detect the admin email that you used and use that one. So you should receive an email there. So we have this confirmation notice here and we can open our email and check it. And we can see that for me, the email did come in. Now, if you did not get the email, I'm going to show you where to fix that just in case you didn't get an email. You're going to close out of there. You're going to go back to your dashboard on your website and you're going to click where it says WP forms. And this simple contact form is the one we're using on our website. We're going to click edit. Then we're going to go to settings and we're going to click on notifications. So by default, it should send it to your admin email. If this uh, is not working for you, you can also erase this and simply type out your email. But it's working for me, so I'm not going to save those changes. I'm just going to X out, but you can save them if you need to. The last thing we have to do is fix this little warning we have up here that says not secure. This is because our website doesn't have an SSL, which means that it's not encrypted. So if someone sends us information through the contact form, it won't be as safe as a website that does have an SSL. And usually Google likes websites that are safer. So the good thing is that you don't have to buy an SSL. HostGator gives you an SSL for free, and I'm going to show you how to activate it. So we're going to go back to the dashboard one more time, and we're going to go to plugins because there's a plugin that's going to help us set this up. Now we have a lot of notifications here that we can close out of because we don't really need them. Okay, so I just closed out of all of those. And uh, every once in a while, the plugins that you do have might get an update. You just have to click on the plugin and then choose update and click apply. That way you can make sure your plugins are up to date whenever a, an update is needed. So we're going to let that update. Okay, and all our stuff is up to date. And let's go ahead and add the plugin uh, that gets us the SSL working. So we're going to go ahead and click add new. And we're going to search for simple SSL. And we're going to click install now on this one right here. If you don't see this plugin, you can also search really simple SSL, which is the actual name of the plugin. And then this should come up with this little icon like this. Uh, so let's click activate. And then here it says almost ready to migrate the SSL. We're going to go ahead and click here where it says go ahead and activate. And it says SSL is activated. So we can go ahead and refresh our website. For that to take place it's going to ask us to log in again so plug in your username and your password that you made and now we see that the ssl uh, is active and we know that because the little lock is showing uh, and we can go back to our website and make sure that it shows on every page sometimes it doesn't show so here we see that it's not showing uh, so i'll show you how to fix that uh, let's go back to the dashboard and this is a little setting that you have to change in Elementor. So we're going to go to Elementor and we're going to go to tools and we're going to go here where it says replace URL. So the SSL changes your URL uh, to add an S for secure. So we're going to highlight this and copy it. And so here it's asking us to plug in the old URL and the new URL. So the new URL is the one we have right now. And the old URL, we can paste this one again but we just have to remove the S because that was not there before. So we're telling uh, Elementor to replace all the ones that don't have the S to yes, having the S so that uh, the website can detect that it is secure. And we're going to click replace URL. All right, we're going to click OK. Then we're going to go to general. And just to be safe, I like to regenerate the files and sync the library. That just kind of refreshes some of the files on the website. OK, now we can go back to the website. And we see that now the lock is showing and it should be showing on every page. Just double check and it is. So now the website is uh, completely secure. So all that's left to do if you follow it along is customize these pages to however you want. Um, remember that regardless of how the website looks or what theme you use, you can make it uh, completely different and completely your own. And don't worry about making your website look perfect. 
Uh, my website is never finished. I'm always changing it and adding new things and trying new things. So think of your website as something creative, something that you're always going to be adding to, you're always going to be changing. And don't worry too much about making it 100% perfect. Just enjoy it and make it something that works for you. So once you've done that and you finished your website, you can go ahead and close out of all these extra pages that we have over here. And we can actually go ahead and hover over the right side and click log out to log out of WordPress. And we can go back to our website through the main URL. And then we can finally view our website as a completed project. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I know that I did. I hope that you guys can put together a website that really works for you. I look forward to seeing your project. Leave them in the comment down below. Let me know the URL of the website that you made. Uh, if you need any help, leave your question in the comments or send me a message to my email or my website, which will be linked in the description. Hope you guys had a great time making this website. Hope you guys have an awesome website for 2020. And uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.